In addition to the DRIs, which look at specific nutrients and how much we should be getting to be adequate and how much of it is excessive, there are also recommendations about how much energy we should be consuming in order to promote health. So one key recommendation for energy intake levels is something called the estimated energy requirement. And what this equation basically looks at is given your height, given your weight, given how much you exercise, given your age, given whether you're a female or a male, how much energy should you be consuming in order to stay exactly where you're at? Okay, so we use these two calculations. There's one for men and one for women. Fortunately, unfortunately for me, men get to eat a lot more than women do, a little bit more than women do. Um, but we can use our own data and plug them into this equation in order to estimate, like I said, given all those factors, given your weight, given your height, given your age, etc., how much energy should you be getting in order to stay basically at your same size. So once you've calculated your estimated energy requirement, which my fitness pal does for you, let's say it says that your EER is 2000 calories a day. If you were to continuously eat 2000 calories a day, that means that your fat mass and your weight would stay the same. EER is really good to look at if you're trying to, let's say, gain weight, fat mass, or you're trying to lose weight, fat mass. So let's say my EER turned out to be 2,000 calories a day, but I'm trying to lose some weight from my body for whatever reason. What I want to do is consume calories in a deficit of my, to my EER consistently, and about 500 calories is usually enough to, to see sustainable results. Um, I would con want to consume below my EER in order for my body to burn through some of the fat that it already has on it. So that's why the EER is useful. Something you'll need to calculate your EER is a physical activity coefficient. So if you look back at the equation here where it says PA, that's where you would plug in one of these coefficients that's found on this slide here. And basically, you'll notice that the coefficients get larger as activity levels go up. And this basically shows that the more active you are, the more calories you need in order to maintain your particular size. Another way that we express energy recommendations is something called the acceptable macronutrient distribution range. And what this looks at is not the total calories you should consume in order to stay at your current size. What this looks at is the percent of calories that should <laughs> be coming of, from each of the different energy yielding nutrients. So you'll notice that the AMDRs recommend that the majority of our caloric intake comes from carbohydrates, whereas a smaller amount comes from protein and fat. Okay, so uh, that might seem a lot for a lot of people, but I think people sometimes forget that carbohydrates are what we primarily find in fruits and vegetables and plants. So of course, we wanna be consuming a lot of that. And when we do that, then we're more likely to have more of our calories come from this, um, this category. I've also on this slide expressed this in calories and in, um, in grams of each of these nutrients too. So you get a sense of the caloric recommendations for each of the nutrients and the gram recommendation for each of these nutrients. And this can help you with the diet analysis project as well.